Hey guys and girls, how's it going? And welcome back to another episode of Feed the Beast Resurrection with myself, Lewis. We're really and having yourself a great day, as always. What do you think of this little place? Quite nice, isn't it? A little area like this. I think what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be setting up a few coal coke ovens today, or maybe one today, and then I'll do the rest over time. But uh, that way we can start getting fuel for our brand new blast furnace, which I now have the last few bricks required. Oh yes, and I got all my stuff for my coke oven, which is good. These are mega cheap for you that don't know, just sand and some bricks, and you need 26 of these guys to be able to do that. But uh, this is now pretty much ready, and you can see now it's looking a little bit fancy as well. Let me take you around the front. I've been playing with carpenter's blocks, because I never really play with carpenter's blocks that much, so I thought I'd have a little go. And I also managed to do a spot of enchanting. Well, the, really, the reason I did this is because I did some enchanting, and I got myself a efficiency and silk touch iron shovel. So I decided to go around and uh, get some grass and do this, and I think it looks kind of nice, you know, it's, it's a little bit kind of off on the corners, but overall it looks quite nice, I think, yeah. Let's take you inside and show you what I've been up to. So I've been decking this out, making it look a little bit fancy, we've now got a nice little, uh, little area down here which is very cool, and the sides are looking very... Uh, very sidey. I do like it. <laughs> uh, really, that's kind of all I've been doing. There isn't much I can do because I've been waiting for stuff to cook and things to happen and, yeah, stuff. So, hopefully, we'll be able to get all the stuff today. Now, that we've got these, we should be able to fill this in. And, hopefully, oh, I made one more than I needed to. Jeebus. And this should, hopefully, be good to go. Let me just have a little looky-see out the front. Now, I had a couple of questions in the comments in uh, the last episode, so I thought I'd answer those before we get too deep into it. Uh, I was asked how did I make the... Oh, that looks like it's done, yeah. So I was asked how did I make the hammer forge uh, without using steel, and that's quite a simple answer. I used iron. <laughs> For some reason, and this kind of throws me every time, because I'm used to using Greg Tech by itself, a lot of the recipes show two separate recipes, and you generally will take it at face value that you need to be able, you need to use the Greg Tech ones because you expect Greg Tech to be stupidly hard. But it turns out, you know, you can use the other ones. Uh, when you look at the Steam Forge um, in here, it does show that you can use a regular anvil as well as a steel anvil. So, uh, just use a regular one. <laughs> <laughs> that pretty much does the trick. Uh, it goes for a lot of things like that. Like when you look at things for wire cutting, you'll see that uh, it recommends the Greg Tech wire, but there's nothing stopping you from making the IC2 wire and using that. You can see on here it shows both. So the IC2 one and the Greg Tech. The Greg Tech one is extremely difficult. To, well, it's not difficult to make, it's just a little bit fiddly. Whereas the regular IC2 one, if you have a decent amount of iron, it's probably easier to make. You just need iron plates and some iron, and that makes the cut. And they do the same thing. And uh, that kind of brings me on to a point with this mod pack, which I think is a little bit strange. I think Greg Tech should be put onto the hardest mode. I know it sounds mental <laughs> saying that, but uh, the amount of times that I end up kind of second-guessing myself or doing things weirdly because, you know, I expect a recipe to be removed when it's not is uh, just really strange. I kind of, like the wire cutter just then, I would have expected that you'd have to use the Greg Tech wire cutter because it's more, the recipe is different and such, but it turns out, no. You can use the cheaper one, so there we go. All right, so we got this guy up and running. Let's go ahead and see if it works, I guess. I would like to see how much coal this uses to produce steel. And uh, let me get some iron from inside here. And uh, we're going to give this a shot. So we've got 64 iron. Let's throw that in there. And 57 coal. And it used up a grand total of four bits of coal. So that's uh, not bad, I guess. Four bits of coal. Yeah, it's alright. Although it's uh, not great. So hopefully we're going to be able to get around this with the coal coke. And it's going to make a, uh, you know, it's going to be a little bit more efficient. It's going to take a little bit more time. But we are going to get creosote. And creosote is going to be used in our rail beds later on. So let's throw this down. So I'm thinking of putting it kind of around here with the uh, central point pretty much here. So... We need to make a free by free. So for those of you who have never used Railcraft, or Buildcraft for that matter, because you know what, they're kind of mods that don't get used that much nowadays. Uh, this is a coal coke oven, and this allows us to make coal coke at the price of coal. 
like such. And it does take some time, it's not a fast process, but cold coke will burn for a lot longer than regular coal will. So it's, uh, it's within your favour to go ahead and do that and get the most out of stuff that you can uh, get the most out of. Uh, this is also going to create a byproduct, which is creosote oil. And creosote oil can be used in the manufacturing of track beds, which we're going to get into because I would like to start using some... Uh, of the older mods to see how they work with Greg Tech. I've always thought Greg Tech to be one of those mods that works very well with the, uh, not the older, but the ones that, well, really, they're not that old at all now because most people don't really use them anymore. But, uh, yeah, they just work really nicely with those uh, types of mods. So let's throw that there and we'll switch you on and we're going to bring these along here. Here we go. And hopefully bring them into a bit of tankage. Yes. Can I get up <clears throat> without breaking things? No, it looks like I cannot get up. Wow, can I actually not get out of that? Of course I can. There we go. <laughs> we'll bring these like this. Cool, cool. And let's cover this up. Come on. Get here. Get in the bag. And we'll do that. Good stuff. So I'd already made this before we started the episode. I actually already like set most of this up. But uh, I had a bit of a hoo-ha, and uh, I had to pull it down again, so uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's alright. So now that we got that going, we're going to get cryosite oil, and we're going to get cold coke, which is great, so we can use that as a fuel source. This guy over here does take some time to get going, and you know when it's, gonna get, you know when it's working, because one, it's going to take the fuel, and you're also going to have lava in the middle. And you have got to be a little bit careful, because if you break this while the lava's in there, it will spew out and uh, make a very mighty mess. <laughs> Which you really don't want to happen, or you, you also don't want any items to go in there, so make sure you don't put anything down in there, because that kind of breaks it. It doesn't like that. <laughs> Not at all. Alright, so you can see we've just gone about over halfway, or about halfway, to making our first piece of steel. And with steel, this will lead us on to the electrical age. Yes, we can start making turbines, we can start making all sorts of, me, uh, of mechanical gizmos that are really going to help us get further into Greg Tech. Now, once we go past this point, there is no turning back. <laughs> oh, I just had to say that. Yeah, once we go past this point, we need to start looking for more resources. And uh, the first one is going to be rubber. So, I, Industrial Craft 2 adds rubber trees. Rubber trees can be tree tapped to give you rubber. And generally, you would smelt that rubber to get rubber, uh, regular rubber balls. It kind of looks like a little ball. Um, but with this, it works a little bit differently. Greg Tech does kind of play with this one a little bit. So, let me grab my sapphire stickle which is great, so we can get rid of all these leaves. You don't need the leaves on the trees for them to function, so you can go ahead and uh, get rid of all of those, because that's not really what we're looking for. There we go. And uh, what we're looking for are these little holes right here, these little rubbery holes. And with these, we can go ahead and we can take all of their lovely rubbers and use it for glory. Although we need a tree tap before we can do that. I've just heard a zombie. Where did I hear that zombie? No, now he's gone again. He's gone! <laughs> Alright, let's get a couple of tree taps so that we can uh, get this rocking out and rolling. So we're going to need some of you. And uh, I think I'm just going to keep these in my bag for when I need them. Hopefully later on we'll be able to make an electric tree tap, which will be loads more handy. Cool, cool. And let's put you in there. Good stuff. Alright, so we got our tree taps. And let's go get some rubber. So, there's a couple of different processes we can do with rubber in this, and uh, this is another one where you can uh, kind of do it two ways, really. Um, but the simplest way is to do it the way I'm going to show you. So, we'll grab this, and uh, let's also grab, see if we've got any more. These two just grew. Have they got any rubber on them? Come on. Rubber. Rubber. I might just rip you down if you haven't got any rubber. I've got a little bit here, I guess. Come in. There we go. Wow. Six bits. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Industrial Craft is treating me today. Alright, so with this we can go ahead and we can smell it up. But uh, generally, you would smell it. We're not actually, we're not going to do that. Because smelting rubber in this really is pointless. So let's... Uh, I'm pretty sure it's night time, right? Is it night time? Am I going mental? Can I just... I thought I saw it going down. Oh, it is going down. <laughs> it's only just getting there. Just, uh, just a little bit ahead of my time. 
All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to use this on an extractor. And this extractor is going to give us pulp. And I believe my extractor is around here. Yes, this, there it is. Good stuff. So that's going to do that and give us pulp because for the wires that we're going to be creating in Greg Tech, it's within your best interest to go ahead and make sure that you insulate them. And insulated wires are generally using a lot of the Greg Tech recipes as well as the industrial craft recipes. Now, a big thing to remember with Greg Tech and industrial craft, and this is where it can get a little bit tricky, is uh, unlike the olden days, as people like to call it, Greg Tech and industrial craft no longer share the same power supply. So it used to be that they would use the energy net from uh, IC2 to run Greg Tech machines. That is no longer the case. Now, instead, it uses Greg Tech's form of power, which uses volts and amperage or amps. And uh, it's a little bit different, although pretty much the same. It's a little hard to kind of pinpoint it, but uh, the main thing to remember is in industrial craft, you have so many EU per tick. And now with Greg Tech, the EU per tick for the uh, voltage is the same, um, but the amperage takes into account the amount of packets sent via that tick. So if you have uh, something like 16 voltage at one amperage, then that's 16 EU per tick, pretty much. Uh, but if we had 16 amperage, uh, uh, 16 amperage, if we had 16 voltage with two amperage, then that would be 32, because we'd be sending two packets of 16. So that's kind of how it works. So. And uh, you don't really have to pay too much attention to that when you start, but you do have to make sure that, like IC2 and the old Greg Tech, that you're giving machines the correct amount of power. Any more power and they will explode, and uh, you don't have to be worried about liquids as well, because if they get into contact with water and lava, then they will also explode. So, yes, you definitely don't want that to happen. And much like the steam as well, if they don't have the power required to finish the process, you'll have to start all over again. So making sure you have backup supplies of power is within your best interest. Now you can convert the powers as well, which is kind of handy. So converting from IC2 to Greg Tech can be done via the uh, battery buffers and uh, the, uh, not the battery buffers, not the battery buffers, the converters. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, yeah, we can do that. So uh, we can convert the power between the two, but to be honest, I don't really know why you're going to want to do that because the two power sources are best run by themselves. So here we go, we've got some rubber pulp. And with this rubber pulp, we can go ahead and we can use this on wires, which we're going to need. So I'm kind of keeping a close eye on this because I want to make sure that we make as much as possible. Steel plates are going to be used in a lot of the manufacturing and a lot of the casings. So before we had the bronze casings, which was eight of the bronze, now we're going to be using, or eight of the bronze plates, now we're going to be using steel plates to be able to make the steel or the machine casings, which I believe is eight steel plates, which is obviously 16 steel. And uh, yeah. Obviously, we can get around that <clears throat> later on once we get into the uh, into the energy age, but uh, not just yet. All right, so the first thing we're going to want to make for producing electric, I think I'm going to go with something like a steam turbine. A very basic source of power, but it will use the steam that we already have, so it's a good way to be going. Now, a basic steam turbine is this little guy here. It may, <laughs> might look a little bit kind of iffy, but it is... Uh, that's just the way it is. And uh, we're going to use an electric circuit for this. So you can see that we use the copper cables along here. Don't be mixed up with the Greg Tech and the, uh, and the regular ones. You can use the industrial craft ones. I think it actually only allows you to make the industrial craft ones. So for that, we're going to need copper and we're going to need rubber to be able to do this. You can also use, as it just showed there, if you have MFR trees, you can use the, uh, the rubber bars from Mine Factory Reloaded as well. So... That's kind of handy, but the uh, copper cables are pretty much just uh, copper plates and a wire cutter. So let's grab some of these and a wire cutter, which I do not have. I must, must not have one. All right, let's go make one of these. So we're going to need some of you and my hammer. Cool, cool. Here we go. So we're going to make three of these. Good stuff. And do this, and a little bit of this, and boof! And now we can cut our wires into these. So I'm going to take a load of these, because, uh, you know, it's always handy to have that. And we can go ahead and we can wrap this in our rubber. I think we might need to... Yeah, we need to smelt this up, don't we? Let's grab some furnacing. Let's do a few in you. And a few in you. Good times. So yeah, the reason why I'm saying not to worry about the Greg Tech recipes for something like this is if you can see the other recipe available, you might as well use it because to be able to make the Greg Tech wires, and I don't think you can actually do it, I think it reverts it back to the IC2 ones in this, uh, you need to go and make a mold, and that's going to use up 8 bits of your steel, and you know what, you don't really have steel to spare at the minute, so if you can get around doing that, then that's 
a good idea because you'd use a mold, you'd place it in the alloy smelter and such, and you'd do it that way. Oh, my red alloy ingots done. Nice. I was figuring out how to make red alloy ingots. I, did, I had no idea how to do it. Like, you look in the N NEI for uh, recipes, and that's, uh, that's that. And it really doesn't show you a great deal. You see that you have to obviously use the red alloy dust, but the recipe to make the red alloy dust uses... Uh, these bits, so macerators aren't going to do you any good. Nope, 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 nope. And eventually we'll come back to the beginning again. <laughs> so it doesn't really show you how to uh, how to make it. But I found out that you need to use, I believe, four bits of copper and some redstone. I think that's it. Let's have a look. Is it copper? Ah, there we go. We just needed... A little bit more redstone for it to do the trick. Good stuff. So it was the was the copper to do that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to get very confused with these recipes very soon. So uh, we already have our piece of steel, which is nice. Let's have a look inside here. We've got we've got some steel and some tiny pile of ashes, which is good. We're probably going to want some more coal coke. So let's go grab a little bit more of that, and uh, we can use the ashes later on to make some uh, stuff that's going to be a little bit helpful with forestry, which is. Always good. So I'll grab you and place you down inside here. And I think we're going to start working on getting our steam turbine together. It's going to be a long <laughs> and rough ride. But it's a rough ride that we need to conquer. And uh, we're going to do it together. So now that we've got the copper cables and we've smelted that up, we're going to have our rubber bars. And with our rubber bars, we can mix them with this to make insulated copper cables. Now let's have a little look at how many insulated copper cables we're actually going to need for this. So... Uh, we need to make these chips to make the steam turbine. We're going with the uh, basic, and we want to make this thing first. So let's have a look at the NAND chips, because they're going to be the uh, harder parts. We need a tin wire, we need some red alloy wires, and we also need some refined iron plates. Refined iron plates, I believe, use steel in their recipe to make. So let's do this, and this, and this, and then we beat up the steel plate. I believe. Uh, which way is it? Let's have a look. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, nope, that's the wrong one. This little guy. <clears throat> Come on, turn. Do your thing. There we go. Uh, yeah. uh, and okay. All right. So it's that. And uh, that gives me refined iron item casings. Good stuff. And we're also going to want our red alloy that we had a second ago. We'll beat this into a plate. And cut it up with you. There we go. Oh my jeez, that gave me one. <laughs> that gave me one. <laughs> oh no. How many am I going to need? Let's have a look. Copper. And you. And you can go in there. I'm probably going to need some more redstone with that. Yeah. Here we go. Good stuff. So we're going to need another two of those to be able to make this. And it's probably going to be easier if we just do it like this. So we need to make an electric circuit before we can uh, do anything. Actually, I think it might just be under circuit. Let's have a look. Circuit. Uh, yes. So uh, we need two of these. So I'm going to need, wow, a lot. Put it that way. <laughs> probably more than two. <laughs> and I need to make two of these. Oh my god. Alright, so uh, at least we'll get a start on it now. So, these guys, this, and you. And then we need a tin casing. So let's do that, plus that, and that. A little bit of this. Good stuff. A little bit of tin cable. And I can use tin cable for this, can't I? I'm not going mental. Uh, we need tin wire. I'm guessing I can. I don't know. Let's give it a try. Uh, we actually got the bits, haven't we? So it'd be something like that and that. No. <laughs> don't do this to me. All right. We can't do that then. So I guess we're going to use... Yeah. That was a tin plate we just used right there. Hold on. Did we, did we do that right? Maybe we need to do it the other way around. Ah, there we go. All right, so we need to do it on that side. Ah, to make the 
<laughs> so that's how you make the different wires, I guess. You can make those ones or those ones. I wonder if that works same with the copper ones. I don't know. All right, so that's that and that and that. Give us a NAND chip. And uh, we're going to need two of these <clears throat> to be able to make this. So fairly expensive stuff. Let's put that in there. It's more redstone. And uh, get you rocking out a roll in. How are we doing? Ooh, it's a little bit dark. Let's have a sleep. So you can kind of see uh, where we're going with this. It's going to take a bit of time before we can get our first piece of power going. But once we've got our first, 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 once we've got our first piece of power going, we can start looking into making things like the electric blast furnaces and such. And they're going to be mega, mega helpful later on for us to be able to uh, make all the bits that we need to do. So uh, we've got that. We need one of those. We need a bunch of these. We're going to need in total six of these. So let's grab you and you and we'll get six of these cool cool and some more redstone there we go i think that is uh more than enough so that and that and then uh we'll break this up again what if it does it that way no all right cool stuff we need another piece of tin and uh, let's do that. Gives us an oh, we want that one. Now that is going to get me every time. <laughs> what a pain in the bum. All right. And hopefully after time we'll get enough steel to be able to make the next piece. So we need two bits of steel to make the next NAND chip so we can make the refined iron item casing. That would be two of the NAND chips made. And then we need to make a refined iron plate to uh, do that so that's going to be another two pieces of steel that are going to need to be made all right oh my god it's coming together slowly and uh, let's have a look at the other bits that we're going to need to make so we've got that we're going to need a lv machine hole that is going to be the uh, almighty annoyance that will be the lv machine hole uh, we need small tin rotors electric motors electric motors require iron rods uh copper wires tin cables, insulated tin cables, new steel rods as well. The uh, iron rods, I need to remember how to make these because uh, we need a certain tool to create iron rods, don't we? Let's have a look. Uh, I want to make regular iron. Uh, we use a file. All right, so that's not that bad. I think I have a file, yes. So we use you and that to grab a load of those. Good stuff. And... Then we need the copper cables. Can we use regular copper cables or do I need these ones? I'm going to take a wild guess that I need to use the Greg Tech ones. Yes. <laughs> Looks like we do. So we need tin wire and we're going to need some more tin. Let's make a couple more of these. Here we go. So we've got you. And then we'll, co we'll uh, cut these and make sure we cut them into the Greg Tech wires. Because that's very important. And then we'll make two of these. Oh, are you going to get in the hole? Get in the hole. <laughs> uh, I want to add you to... Oh, man. Am I going to have to... Really? You're going to make me do that? <laughs> You're going to make me do that? you got to be kidding. Why can't I just use the other ones? Uh, okay. All right. Well, uh, it looks like we're going to have to... Oh man, that is a real pain in the butt. See, now this is the one thing that I find a little bit annoying of this pack, is that it allows you to use the two different cables, but it but it doesn't unify the recipes. Like, uh, we have to use the regular IC2 cables to make those things, but we should be able to use the GregTech ones as well. Um, and we have to use the GregTech ones to make these, but we should be able to use the IC2 ones as well, because practically they're the same thing, and the, and the cost is exactly the same as well to make them. So... I don't see why we can't do those, but it looks like the computer says no. And to make rubber sheets, I'm actually going to need a lot more steel. I'm going to need eight bits of steel because I need to make a mold, I believe. And then with the mold, we need to slap it into shape. I'm pretty sure this is that much. Yeah, two, four, six, eight. So we're going to need eight bits of steel to make the mold so we can make the plate, the rubber plate. 
And I guess at some point we should do that anyway because making the rubber plates is going to be handy for making a rubber hammer. And with the rubber hammer we can go ahead and we can uh, we can configure the machines a little bit better. So that's kind of one thing that I guess we're going to need to do anyway. So, oh well. There we go. Cool stuff. We'll pop that in there. Alright guys, so that's going to be that for today's episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. We haven't got as much as I would like to have got done today, but we will hopefully in the next episode manage to get our steam turbine up and running and be able to make some power once I have a decent amount of steel. The one thing that's really holding us back at the minute is production of steel. Once we can get a load of steel, we can really start, you know, tackling all of the recipes. And they may look a little bit finicky, you know, that you need certain wires for certain things. You can't use those wires to insert those wires and such. Um, it is a bit of a pain in the butt that they do stuff like that. But hey, that's, uh, you know, that's just the way that the game plays. So you've uh, got to get on with it. And once we've got all this sorted, we've got a decent amount of steel, we can make everything that we need to make, and we can move into the Electric Age, which is going to be absolutely great. I would like to start playing with Railcraft very soon as well. I think Railcraft's going to be coming very handy, as well as Buildcraft, because we do have, I believe, the Buildcraft robots, yes, that we can be playing with. So these are going to be a load of fun, using all of these Buildcraft Majigama Bobs. And uh, getting little robots to do guys for us. I'm looking forward to doing that. <laughs> it's going to be great. And uh, we have a decent amount of cryosol oil coming in as well. Good stuff. Sweet. Alright guys, well I hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you have, make sure to drop a like as it helps the channel out a great deal. And thank you for the support that you've all been showing in this series. I've had a lot of people saying they've been enjoying it, which is... A great, yeah, that's good. I thought most people wouldn't because of Greg Tech, but you know what? Greg Tech's a challenge, but some people need a challenge after having everything handed to them on a plate with uh, some of the other mods these days. <laughs> good stuff. All right, guys, I'll see you soon for another episode. Have yourself a great day. Have a good one as always, and goodbye.